Good day. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, uh, Ag Expert Field, using Field App on your cell phone. And so we'll get right started with this here. Uh, actually, I should introduce myself too. My name is Kelly Ross, and I'm the Senior Product Support for Training. And I have been uh, with the FCC Ag Expert team since about 2002. And we will get started now with today's webinar. So I'm sharing my screen with you right now. And this is a database that I just kind of have that I play around with. And as you can see here, it has 20 fields. And this is accessing it through my actual browser. So what I want to do is I want to get this on my actual phone and start using things on my phone. Because that's where the real benefit to things are when you're out, actually out in the field, using it on your phone, putting it in right at that actual moment, the information into the app. And then when you're actually coming, when you come back home, when you get to a good Wi-Fi zone or a cell phone zone, at that point in time, it would bring it up to the cloud, and it would then bring it down to the uh, browser side of the Ag Expert field. So yeah, so for a little bit of the agenda today, I guess, is just like I said here, we're going to install the field app. We're going to do a sign-in on a field app. We'll review all the menus on the app, add a field, add an activity, add a contract. Um, maybe even make a delivery on a contract. We'll see how things go on. And um, we started off with, like I said here, on the Agex for field on the browser. So what I'm going to do here is, as you can see here, there's 20 fields. So let's get these fields on our actual phone. So I'm going to attempt to share my phone screen through Teams here. And hopefully it should work out. We will see what we could do here. So just give me 30 seconds and we'll switch over here. Okay. Let's see here. I think it's sharing yet. Just about there. Okay. We will then see here now where we're at here. Here we go. Start screen broadcasting. Okay. Perfect. You should be able to see my screen. It should say something like, so this is my phone screen. It should say something about screen broadcasting, stop broadcasting. Perfect. So let's get moving. So uh, the app that we've designed works on both uh, an iPhone and also on an Android device then too. Um, using Today I'm using uh, an iPhone device. And so where you get the actual app from on an iPhone is your app store. And I believe on Android, it's a Google Play, if I remember correctly. And they're both free downloads, all that kind of stuff. So let's get it installed here then now. So let's go to the App Center. And here in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm going to do a search here for Ag Expert. Ag Expert Field it comes up there. Perfect. This is the one I want, Ag Expert Field at the top of the screen there. Like we got four stars out of five. Looking good. Okay, so we'll click on that feature here to download that. And it's going through the install process now. So this all depends on the speed of your actual internet on how long it's going to take. Uh, while it's downloading and installing, we'll speak a little bit more on the Ag Expert field. So yeah, so its purpose behind this is to take it out in the field with you. Uh, you always you then have a one-stop shop to enter your information. A live, I guess you could say, as soon as you're done that activity, whether it's spraying activity, seeding activity, or whatever it is you're doing, or even delivering a contract, pull out your app at that point in time, and uh, you can enter that information at that point in time. So it just helps in the actual efficiency of collecting the actual data is what it does. Instead of going back to your main browser, 
uh, trying to re- recall what you actually did in that day, the acres, the spray, the seed, whatever took place, um, you could actually put it in right using the actual app. Okay, so finish downloading there. I would say it took about a minute or so. So let's click on open here. Okay, so now it wants me to sign in. So I click on continue there. And I am going to actually, I just got to find which actual email address I used. Okay, so this is the same email address and the same password that you used to initial, to get in on your actual browser side. So we will put this in place here then. What it is here. Just going to make sure I type it all right. Kind of a long one, unfortunately. I should have thought that through a little bit more and made it a little shorter. Well, there. thanks for being patient and continuing to watch here. Okay, so we got my email address in place, done. I'll put my password in place. Same password I would use on my browser. Okay. So let's get things done here and see what it wants to do. So what it's doing now is it's downloading my farm information, those 20 fields, and all the other information that is contained in my browser side of Ag Expert field. Step 404, it's almost there. This step really only has to be done this once. It will load up that much quicker once it's already been downloaded once. Still plugging away here, so that's great. Okay, we are in, just like that. Good stuff. Okay, so, what we're going to do here is I'm going to review some of the menus at the bottom of the screen, what they all mean, and what, what's all going on here with this Ag Expert field. So at the bottom of the screen, as you can see here, well, let's, we have activities in the bottom left-hand corner, but let's actually start off with fields. Fields are the most important things. Without fields, you can't do no activities. So let's start there. So as you can see here, we have the same 20 fields that we had initially on our actual um, Ag Expert field browser. Is what we have going on here. So if I just chose one of these fields, let's see what it then says. So Home Kelly, let's go to that one. So what this is going to then show me is that same boundary map that I have on my Ag Expert browser. And below that, it's going to show me all the other, uh, all the activities that I currently have right now. This year, it looks like I am viewing 2021 information, which is fine. Just looking at my information here now. If I wanted to add a new activity, there's a couple different ways you could add an activity. I could use the plus directly to the right of activities. Otherwise, I could actually, um, to get back on the screen, you go to the top left-hand corner, to the arrow to the left. Otherwise, I could go to the activities button in the bottom left-hand corner. And here I could use in the top right-hand side, the plus button there. And there's a listing of all my activities then that I could choose from, the same listing that is on my Ag Expert field browser. So that's really cool. Okay, so let's cancel this. Let's get back to fields. And like I said, here's the same 20 fields that I was initially looking at. Uh, we clicked on uh, Home Kelly. It brought up that same boundary that we're currently looking at before or that I originally created, I should say. Um, I could zoom in by using my fingers there. Zooming in, all that good kind of stuff. Uh, share location on this field. Tap the mark and you want to share with someone. There's an option to do that, as you can see then, too. Also, too, in the top right-hand corner, I believe this is an edit option here in the top right-hand corner. And it allows me then to see um, a field name if I wanted to rename it, my area if I wanted to change that around, legal land description. All that good kind of stuff. 
and then the save in the bottom right hand corner. If I wanted to draw my boundaries, I could do that. Myself, I probably wouldn't be drawing too many boundaries on my phone. Depends on the type of phone you have and depends on how comfortable you are, just because you're working with a lot smaller surface compared to your actual browser on your main computer. I'd probably try to get all my, my boundaries and my that type of stuff mapped out on my actual browser. This I would just be using for adding activities, contracts, that type of information and, and looking at past history is what I'd be looking. But you could, if you really wanted to, you could clear the map and you could start again with actually creating that boundary. Or if you do create a new field, you could actually create the boundary at that point in time. So we'll just use the left arrow and we'll close out of that. And we'll use the left arrow in the top left hand corner again. We'll close out of that. So yeah, so that's fields. If I wanted to add a new field, if I didn't have my field in my listing, in my 20 fields here, I'd go up to the top right hand corner. I click on the, the plus of the circle. That would then allow me then to uh, would then allow me then to draw a new boundary, just like I said before here. So let's actually do that here then now. Let's continue forward with this. So I'll click on choose. So it's a little bit more difficult to do it because you have to. It's there. Like I said, I wouldn't necessarily always do it using this means, but it can be done. So I clicked in the middle there. I got my boundaries. I could tighten things up if I really wanted to on my outer edges there by moving those dots around. Give it a file name. So we'll go uh, east of home. So that's east of my home quarter, actually. East of home. So we'll just call it that. 157 acres gives my legal land description. Uh, it's owned. Any notes that I want in place, I could put that in place. All that awesome stuff in there then, too. I could even update my acres here then, too, if I wanted to. So let's click on Done. Let's click on Save. And then now it should be listed here then, too. East to home. Bang. There it is. So, yeah. So, no activities. Nothing's been put in place. So, that's how you would then add a new field in place then, too. So we'll just close out of that. If you wanted to also, there's the three dots in the top right-hand corner. When you, If I went to fields in the bottom left, in the top right-hand corner, I have the three dots. Here I could filter my fields. I could, uh, if I only want to see certain fields, uh, there's a show hide option there. So let's click on filter. So I could filter it by my actual crops is what I could filter it by. If I only want to see certain crops that have certain commodities on it. So let's actually just select, oh, I don't know, let's select barley. Okay, and we'll use the left arrow on the top uh, left-hand corner. Bang, the only one that has barley on it was Home Kelly. So that's the way that works. Okay, so so yeah, so that's fields. You got your fields in place. The same fields are on your browser. We added a new field. We drew a, a very simple boundary. Then now let's go over to uh, activities. So uh, these are the current activities that we currently have in place. As you can see here, the very top one is on sprayed with Roundup, dry herbicide, Kelly's Town. Uh, we have a manure on Landmark Road, another manure on Eastfield, all that good kind of stuff, as you can see here. All activities are here. And once again, at the top, to the right of activities, there's a filter option then too. Allows me to do different filters if I wanted to, to only show certain activities and in the top right hand corner there's also the plus there once again this allows me then to choose what type of an activity I want to do so if I want to do a uh, well, planting activity and here uh, it allows me to tap more than one field so east of home so let's tap that one and uh, if I would like this would work if I want to do same application on more than one field at the you know in the same day. That's how you would then do it. So then let's like east of home, uh, G field. This works really nice for like spraying applications or maybe harrowing, where you could pound through some acres in one day and then do one operation or one activity and filter onto both uh, both fields. Yes, you see our multiple fields. So then all I would then do is click on next. And here it allows me to do a planned activity or completed activity. So 
exactly the same thing, same uh, scenario as on the actual browser for the field, for the Ag Expert field. So what we have here is you select an input seed, seed. So we'll click on the right arrow to the right of seeds. Allows me then to choose what it is I want to seed. So let's go and choose canola. If I didn't have that in my listing, I could click on a plus in the top right hand corner and allow me to add a new actual seed in place then too. So we'll just do that. And this is how you would then start to add a new seed in place then too. So exact same thing as the browser side. So let's just select canola uh, 2273. And uh, so then the amount, let's put in here 65 pounds per acre. Our area is 191 acres. No seed treatment. Uh, fertilizer, if there's fertilizer app applied, we could then select that. By clicking on the far right hand side, I have my built in list of my existing fertilizers that came over from my actual browser. If I needed a new one, click in the top right hand corner and a plus. If I need a new one that's not in this listing. So we'll just select the 83216. Uh, the amount of pounds, so pounds per acre, let's just put 100, make it very simple. Our area, the date in which this was done. So what we're looking at here is is we're looking at information back in 2021. So let's actually just um, update this date here from and to. So let's just update this to 2021. As you can see here, we can move through this fairly quick. Perfect. Oh, that didn't take it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it did take it. I just was uh, I was impatient. Okay, from and to, so March 5th, and uh, I should say May 5th, and then planting two. So let's put this in place. And let's go to May 6th. Okay, so we have our date in place. Uh, details, two field selected equipment that was used. Uh, so at that point in time, I have my equipment in place. If it's not there, I can add it on the fly by clicking a plus in the top right hand corner. Four by four tractor slash seeder. Select that. Use our uh, our arrow key in the top left hand corner to get back. Assign so that we need some hours. Let's say here it took us. 12 hours to do the two fields, done. Assign to myself as the employee. Okay, the weather on that data picks that up. And no attachments, no notes. So we have our uh, seating activity almost in place here. All I then need to do is click on save in the bottom right hand corner. And my seating activity is now in place. Good stuff. So to then now filter for that seating activity if I wanted to see it a little bit more, instead of scrolling through my whole list, I could then click on my filter at the top right uh, top right hand corner of the screen. And I could do a couple different ways. I could do it by uh, only my activities, signed by, active status, completed. I could just do it on the plant option. I could do it on the fields if I wanted to just see what's been done on the fields. So uh, that one that we chose was east of home in the G field, I believe it was. And so I'll just toggle those on, use the left arrow key at the top, and bang, there's those, those two activities that I just put in place. So that's how you would actually then do all your activities. Everything from planting, you know, everything from planting, tilling, scouting, swathing, harvest, hill, uh, irrigation. Another thing too, at the end of March here of 2023, we're actually gonna have a new tile here that will include um, soil test, allow you to input a soil test. Before that, I was probably just recommending putting in as a scout activity is what I was then doing for soil test, but they're gonna have a new tile for that. Okay, so we'll just cancel here. And uh, what we'll then do is we'll go, uh, so we did fields, we did activities. Along the bottom here, inventory. Let's go to inventory. Okay, so as you can see here, I've been playing around with this. 
I have apple, I have blueberries, I have uh, canola, corn, all that kind of stuff. And it tells uh, what percent has been contracted and what has not been contracted. So, and then now at the bottom of this screen here then too, is how we would then access and add in a contract. So at the bottom you see the contracts and then the right arrow, click on that. Okay. So, so this is what is all, these are my contracts that I have in place. It looks like I have a foreign place. I fully delivered on my barley, as you can see there's 100% delivered. The other two, my canola and my corn and my potatoes, haven't made no delivery on those at all. Uh, so if you wanted to, if you want to make a delivery, it would be done from the same screen here then too. So let's just go with the canola there. And we'll use the arrow to the right. So we click on that. Then now it allows me then to see my actual uh, uh, original contract is what it then allows me to see here. Contract number, all that kind of stuff. Target, deliveries, all that good kind of stuff. I said I was supposed to deliver this on one day. Looks like January 31st, my price. I could, I could edit this then too. Once I have it put in place, I could edit this all in too if I really wanted to, as you can see here. But then to make a delivery, uh, at the top of the screen here, you see deliveries to the right of that, the plus. I just click on that. And then at this point in time, I can make my delivery. And we'll put a contract number in. Storage, uh, storage location. So this was, uh, so we'll just choose from here. And we'll choose from our SW arrow bin. Is where my commodity is. Okay, and so at that point in time, I said it was 2,000 bushels. So we'll say we delivered on it fully. 2,000 bushels. This is associated to my storage location, SW Arrow, it was called. Net amount sold, grade, if I wanted to put that in place. Uh, storage location, we have that already in place. We have a ticket number. Remaining, and we'll just put a grade in place here. One, done. Unit price, we have no notes. Uh, so everything should be good to go here then now. So we'll just make sure we have this selected here. Deliveries, remaining, gross amount. 2,000 bushels, and we'll click on uh, should not be empty. Oh. Net amount sold shouldn't be empty. Okay, that's told me up here. 2,000. There we go. Done. Save. I've just now delivered on a contract. That's what I then did. So if we go back at this point in time, then uh, we should then update itself here. I might have to refresh it. Let's just see here now. Click filters. Deliveries remaining zero today. You know, all that good kind of stuff. We'll just confirm everything looks correct. Basis, we don't need to worry about that. Save. There we go. Okay, it updated itself there. Just took a minute for it to refresh. So as you can see now, my canola, 100% delivered. I still have corn, a corn contract, a potato contract. If I wanted to create a new one, I'll go back up to the top right-hand corner to the plus. And I fill out my contract information here then. That's the way it would then be done. And when I come back into the contract, there would then be a spot for deliveries. Okay. So yeah, so then that's your contracts. To add a new storage location, if you don't have that location listed, go to storage locations at the bottom here. Here's all my existing uh, storage locations that I have on site here. So if I wanted to see what's what's pertaining to that storage location, let's just grab this bottom one that says East 2. Okay, it drops the pin where that storage location is. That's what it then does. Uh, it tells me what's stored in there. tells me the history. All that good kind of stuff. If I wanted to edit that storage location, I click in the top right-hand corner, and now I'm at my edit screen. I could change the name, I could change the capacity. 
uh, whether it's bushels or tons or whatever I want to actually change it to. Save it. And it's back there. And we'll click on the back in the top left-hand corner. And yeah, and we'll click once again on the uh, on the back in the top left-hand corner. Or I should say the arrow in the top left-hand corner. Okay, so that's underneath what's underneath the inventory menu there then too. So let's move over to the right here and let's go to more. So then now the more option here then too. Uh, this lists the current farm that I'm, I'm I'm tracking here. If I had more than one farm, I would actually click on the right arrow beside my farm here, and it would allow me then to select. If I had another two or three different types of oper farm operations I was tracking, it allow me then to access those ones then too. My crop here. So we'll click on the right arrow to that. So as you can see, I have 2021, 2020, uh, 2020. The crop years, uh, you'd want to create the crop year on your actual browser on your web, just as it says there. Crop years should be added on the actual browser on your main computer. Uh, it doesn't allow for it through the actual app. Okay, and inputs. Here's where my listing of all my inputs come into place. So let's just grab the top here. It says crop protection products. We'll grab that. Here's a listing of those current ones that I have all on hand. If I wanted to add a new one, I go to the top of the screen and click on the plus. And it allows me then to, it should take me to the screen here. Yep. allows me then to add in that actual um, commodity, or I should say that crop protection product at that point in time, using my filters or scrolling up or down. I like to use my filters to find uh, find what I actually want to add in place. So let's just do a search here for so IP roundup original, I could select that. Next. Now it wants more detailed information. So this is exactly the same information that my um that would be supplied on my actual browser then too. So purchase price, so I don't know put in here $60 a liter or $60 a jug. We could update this to jug. Application rate, I'll just go with uh, 0 0.05 liters per acre. Uh, one jug equals 35 liters. So obviously I have my cost per acre run wrong here then, so it's a lot more than then maybe um, sixty dollars a jug, but as you can see, using the, the the items that I put in place, that's what it works out then. And it tells me, it allows me to set a reentry vault date and a pre-harvest interval date. Notes. And it tells information about the product information, what group it falls in, your active ingredients, all that good kind of stuff. Okay, and yeah, so we'll click on done. Let's confirm that everything is the way we want it to be here. Oh, okay, reentry will date must not be empty. So we'll just put this in place here. One and one. Done. Save. Okay. And then now we'll then go back. And that actual crop protection product will then be in my list then. As soon as it works its way back and saves that information for us. Okay, and we'll go back here. And then now at that point in time, I can't remember which roundup it was that I selected here, but it is now on my list here now. So let's go back to this here. Actually, right here. Good stuff. And we'll just allow it to refresh itself. And it's still not in place here. Do it one more time. See if it's then in place. Inputs. I must have filled out something wrong here then. Oh, it's still it's the green arrow or the green things going across the top there to refresh itself. And we'll just give it one more chance here to refresh itself. And then we'll be able to check it out here if my roundup's in place. Okay, there it is. Yeah, my IP code roundup original. I guess it was always there. I should have just scrolled down. 
my fault. Okay, so so that's how you'd be adding your crop protection products. Same thing would be with your seeds, plus in the top right-hand corner, and then over to the far right-hand side, if we wanted to hide something, there's a show hide option with the three dots. Fertilizer, same scenario, plus in the top right-hand corner to add in a new one, or my existing ones that came over from the browser, and the same thing with manure. Okay, so then we're still at the more screen here, and then equipment. Here's the existing equipment that came over from the browser. To add a new piece, plus in the top right-hand corner, would allow me to add a new piece of equipment in place. And contacts. So these are my buyers and my employees. But this is okay. Then there's an offline mode. The offline mode works really nice for if you're going into an area that doesn't have very good cell coverage. Um, you'd start off in the morning, sign into your app, allow to allow it to uh, make sure all your fields are listed there. Then you come here and you would toggle over the offline mode. And then you go ahead and work all day long, putting your information into the app. When you come back to an area that has good cell phone coverage or good Wi-Fi coverage, toggle this up. And at that point in time, it's going to sync up to the cloud and bring it down to your browser for the next time that you actually uh, go into the browser at that point in time. And below that, we have help. And so this is a way that you can contact us. We have an online community. We have our email address. You can email us. Our 1-800 number there, too, with our hours of operation. Um, what's new release notes that tells about the past releases what's been all put into releases for the app is what that tells let's go back to the more the about screen tells the version and if for some reason we require you for support reasons um, to send us your data for uh, to repair or to view or to you know for some unknown reason we I've never actually really had to do that but the option is there this would be something that we would instruct you. It's just not something that you'd go and click on and select the send data to Ag Expert Support. No, you just wouldn't select that. It'd be something that we'd actually say, hey, we need it because of this, this, and this, and it would be a problem that we're working through with you. Okay, and below it also tells the email address that I'm associated to or this file is associated to. And then at the bottom, uh, we also have the sign out there then too. So what I'm going to do here then now is uh, I'm going to switch back over to my browser and we're going to sign back in and we're going to see that same information. Um, actually, just before we do that, the only the only um, items that are not on the actual app that are on the browser that makes it different from one to the other is the planning tool, uh, the crop plan on your actual um, browser is there. It's not on the app. The planning tool is not there, and also any reports. Reports are on your main browser, on your computer. They're not on the actual phone. If we were to make the reports, they would be so small, you wouldn't be able to read them on the actual phone and that kind of scenario. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing this screen, and I'm going to switch it back to my main browser, and we're going to see all the information transferred over here. So give me a split second to figure this out here. So stop uh, sharing here then now. And now on my main browser, on my main computer, I will see if we could share again here. Okay, so we should be sharing now. And so I need to put in that actual email address and password then. Okay, and my password. Now we're going into the browser side on Chrome, on my main computer, and we're in now. Let's go to Fields, and here we can then see we have one extra field. Oh, here it is, East of Home. Here is my new field that I created on my actual um, app. So we'll just click on it. 
your number. This is the one actually I created the boundaries for. And that's the one we did our planting operation for too. And here I could update my boundaries if I just created them on the fly on my phone here. I could take the time now and actually update those boundaries a little bit deeper here if I really wanted to. So, yeah. That'll allow me then to do that. As you can see here, it's a lot easier to do it on your actual main screen here than it is on the phone. Phone's there, allows you to capture it, but come back to your main browser and update those actual boundaries from here uh, instead of struggling on the phone with the little dots in that aspect. And yeah, save it, and it's a done deal. Okay. And so, yeah. So then that's the way the everything flows. Get the app, get the app installed on your actual phone. Um, get out in the field, start doing your activities. When you're done your activity, put that active, put that information into the actual phone app. Um, then come back that evening. It will then sync it up to your, the cloud and bring it down to the browser. And you'll then be able to view it on your actual browser screen. So... That actually, um, just to, to summarize what we all went over here today, uh, we went over um, downloading the app onto the phone, signing in. I showed you on the browser uh, the actual fields that we're going to bring over onto the phone. We brought those over. We added a new field. We added a new activity. We went over the menus at the bottom, went over the offline mode in the bottom. Um, are in a more option there too then. We came back into the browser side on my main computer and we saw the field that we initially created on the actual app and saw that actual planting activity there too. So that's how it all works together. If you have any questions, always give us a call here at 1-800, I'll just bring up this number here, 1-800, uh, I guess it's not here actually, it should be 1-800-667-7893. And uh, we will go forward from there. That concludes today's webinar, Solid, Simple, and Built for the Farm. Hope you guys have a great day, and thank you for viewing this, uh, this webinar. Thank you. Bye.